Welcome back to the viewers and our first guest of the evening is Ms. Maryam Khan, self-published author. Ms. Maryam, it's really a pleasure to have you with us on Helikwait. Thank you for having me, it's a great honor. It's always our honor and pleasure also. So we are curious to know more about your book, will you please tell us? Sure. The latest book I have is called She's Remarkable um, and this is a, a book that's, that's in collaboration with uh, 28 other authors, female authors, all that's from the great. Middle East. It's really inspiring. Yeah. Um, the book itself is called She's Remarkable because we're all writing different stories, different episodes of events that have occurred in our lives. And it's through many speakers, I don't know if you've heard of them, they're based in Dubai through uh, a really That's lovely really lady great. called Sana. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's really great. So even this book, it needs also a book to be written <laughs> about how the process of this book yes. was written. So yeah. It's really amazing. It's really inspiring, the brief uh, story about how you wrote that book, Miss Miriam. We are wondering also, what made you exactly decide to write this book? And how did you get inspired? It's not easy to write a book, no. as we all know. No, it's not. I'd published books before. I started about two years ago when we went through COVID. And these were obviously very, very difficult times. A friend of mine had always said to me that, Miriam, you know, as an English teacher, which is my background, That's great. you really have some really nice words of wisdom. Why exactly. don't you write? Why don't you publish? And it's a scary move, like you said, exactly. you know, to take that first leap and to try and get published. This particular book, however, is a joint one. It's a collaboration. So there's a chapter of mine in there with other women. The f ones that I did by myself, as you said, very, very scary moment. Am I going to get published? Is it going to get taken off the exactly. shelf? Uh, are people going to buy it? Are exactly. people going to read it? Are they going to dislike it? You go through all these fear factors. Exactly. And then once you work through that, inshallah, you know, you become more comfortable. Yeah, exactly. And realize, yeah, I should be comfortable and I should be confident and I should say mashallah to myself because it's a long process exactly uh, and it's like delivering a child in exactly. a way <laughs> exactly it's, it's um, very challenging sometimes yes. only to think about writing a book but yes. um, uh, mashallah you you pass that level and you prove that you can write many books also yes. what's so special about this book it's yeah. that it's written by all women all wom women participated about this book and yeah. this lead us to ask you who are your target audience for this book? Especially it was uh, not normal to be written all by women. It makes yeah. it more unique and special. Yeah, it does. more inspiring. But yeah, I mean, one, it's beautiful to, I mean, you can hear from my accent, obviously I'm from England, born and bred, but to move to the Middle East and to meet such beautiful ladies, all walks of life, some from the Muslim faith, some from other religions and interfaith, and we didn't realize that International Women's Day was coming up as well as exactly. this got published. But it was so beautiful to, to have this collaboration of all female authors in this particular book. And all of them, mashallah, um, I have my own podcast show, so I interviewed quite a lot of them as well. That's great. And they were coming from different backgrounds like healthcare, life coaching, education. Um, they had come to the Middle East, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Kuwait, different places, and they wanted to tell their story. So it was something significant that happened to them. You know, a key life moment, a life-changing moment. And they exactly. wanted it recorded as like a milestone for other people to learn from and to look back at, you know, because this is something hopefully others can, can look back at and learn from as well in a big way. Exactly. Let me share with you a story, sure. uh, Ms. Maryam, regarding something that started to grow for, let's say, 15 plus years ago started to appear mm -hmm. which is the social media mm -hmm. it's everyone's story now mm -hmm. a story nowadays everyone's talking about the social media everyone is using the social media and everyone got their hours spent with the social media it might Correct. be sometimes negative to stay long with the social media Correct. and also it might affect a lot of our hobbies and one of the most important hobbies all humans should commit to is reading so how did the social media affect reading i've seen it as a teacher where most of my students will not go for a physical book they prefer the digital exactly and you know uh, even in the school that i work in where we're a google school we're a classroom everything is like either on a kindle or on a classroom it's electronic even from our phone the minute we get up or the minute we go to sleep even little ones that you see are reading in some form 
it seems this is the way that we are going. Exactly. And getting you know? used, they're getting used yeah, to some of the, some they of like them are it. way better than us, exactly. more than likely, and more and than better. And no one complains about the screen and its effect on the eye. Well, I think through COVID they did. There was a slight change. Obviously, when we had online lessons uh, and we had to go through that particular phase, you know, um, some people did t talk about the fact that they're spending too much screen time. But also, some of them are inquiring more, learning more. But there's the danger that sometimes they're too reliant as well. They'll do a quick search rather than think, you know, proactively. So instead of being a critical thinker, they're thinking more about, oh, let me just Google this answer for an essay. Exactly. And it's trying to teach people as well that that's a good tool. It's an amazing tool. But also rely on your brain. Exactly. Know? I, I don't know about you. I'm from that generation where we had dial-up. Definitely. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I still recall, you know, you're not being able to use the house for Great experience. Yeah. Before, yeah. And p kids these days, they don't understand, you know. They, they, they think that technology is like this. If the Wi-Fi is down, oh, my God, our world's come to an end. Exactly. No, look for something else. Look at the trees. Look exactly. at the nature. Look at what's, what, what is around us, you know, exactly. as well as reading. These exactly. are just one of the things. Actually, I enjoyed the voice of connecting at the dial-up, yes. you know. It had its own <laughs> unique, uh, yeah, the exactly. <laughs> yeah, we cannot skip the fact that you just mentioned that <laughs> you are having a podcast show. Yes. And you have a, you were you are having a lot of guests, so yes. we'd like to know more about your podcast. Sure. Uh, my podcast show is called Raise Your Vibes. It took me a while to think of a, a particular title for that, but I was thinking about at that time during COVID, I was in Mabula. And as you know, we had quite a lot of lockdowns. It's in crowded. in the world, yeah. we had lots of lockdowns. But in Mabula, Hawaii, other areas, we had it in a slightly yeah. different way. It's, it's a crowded you, area. Also. Yes. And as you're aware, we had the lockdown for nearly five months in that time. A lot of people went through lots of difficulties. Exactly. For me, it was a time of, as well as helping and supporting others, you know, counselling them, supporting them. That's great. Um, which is what I'm good at doing, you know. I also thought about my skill set. And this is where the writing came from, but also the podcast show came from as well. I'm a novice. I didn't exactly. know where to start, if I'm honest. You know? Exactly. It's, it's yeah, confusing. It was, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very good with ICT. However, this was a steep like learning curve for me. You know, I had exactly. to learn very quickly how to edit, how to uh, produce, how to then do the marketing, how to do covers. If you look at some of my earlier podcasts, you can see it looks, it looks funny, but it's not funny. But it's a learning curve that the front covers look really basic. Exactly. Now, thanks to applications like Canva, you know, going to the social media, things are a lot easier for you exactly. because you've got lots of templates made. But still, the producing side, editing side, all of that is like a steep learning curve. Exactly. Uh, and the people are like, oh, wow, Miriam, it looks so easy. It's like, no, it's actually a lot of work. Um, exactly. I, I did some filming as well at the time, and I hadn't realized, like when you watch a TV show, how many hours go yeah. into just the split seconds exactly. of putting things down. I learned a lot more respect. And how you edit the scene, yes. how you cut it, and how you remove something, yes. move a few seconds, add a few seconds. Yeah, that this is a lot of work. It, it's, it can be exhausting, but you can enjoy it at the yes. end. Like you can feel the results, and of course it's satisfying to you. Yeah. So since you were a teacher, uh, Ms. Maryam, which is really great, you raised a lot of generations, and you inspired mm -hmm. a lot of uh, people in their uh, lives and their future and their careers also. We are wondering what kind of topics or the main topics on your podcast. I try to have a variety on there. I don't stick to one particular topic. So some of them are about mental health, especially when we went throughout the time of um, COVID and helping mental health across our community and our world. So this to me was very, very important, especially mental health of young people, the mental health of men, because many men don't discuss it. And exactly. sadly, they take an alternative route. Exactly. So it was important to try and say to uh, gentlemen that it's okay to talk about your problems. In the culture that we're in, in the Islamic culture we're in, you know, you have that like male bravado that you need to be strong. Of course, I understand that. And you need to not discuss your problems. But this is where situations happen. Exactly. You know, and also uh, I have a big passion for psychiatry and psychoanalysis. Some of it I studied through my literature course and master's course. But I'm not a doctor in that field yet. One day, inshallah, I might be. Inshallah. So, you know, it's, you've gone through situations yourself. You can counsel. Some people had anxiety attacks. I have uh, a background in special educational needs. So there's a lot of mental health things brought in through there. 
Um, other topics I talked about were things like divorce. I had sadly gone through divorce myself, which is what my chapter is about. And as a woman, as a Muslim woman, it's not easy because there's still stigma and judgments from our society. Exactly. You know, and there are lots of people that go through that situation. Some of them have children involved. It's not easy for them to try and put their lives back together. Exactly. You know, so some of my podcasts talk about that. I have um, interviewed many, many of the people from, you know, wellness camps, uh, people with diabetes, for example, people that are other authors as well, fitness coaches. It's a variety. I try to get people that have just started their careers, started their well-being, and I want them to get support and help. And luckily, their businesses grow. Exactly. So that's my background for that show. Well, uh, Miriam, you are, mashallah, a uh, book publisher and also yes. a writer and also you're an English teacher and you're a podcaster, yes. you made us curious enough <laughs> to yeah. know your future plans. Well, Please, you, we want you to share, us with, to share it with us sure. and some exclusive news also. It's all, oh, well, you're going to yeah. be very lucky. Um, recently, Definitely. I was very, very honored to be invited to Queer Engineers Forum. That's which, great. Uh, yeah, it was a beautiful honor. And I was able to go and do some motivational speaking to some f all females. Again, it was That's so great. beautiful to be given the opportunity to speak to to ladies from all ages, all backgrounds, and it was a blessing to see this in Kuwait as well. You know exactly. how hard it is um, to see women being pushed in one particular direction in education. So to see a room full of female engineers here in Kuwait, mashallah, it was so nice. Exactly. And I had the opportunity to speak to them about, uh, you know, motivation and empowerment. So this is something I'm doing through uh, many speakers and on my own. So I'm hoping at some point there are, there are more, uh, you know, opportunities for me to go and speak uh, to people, whether it's doing some workshops as well. There was some ladies I met that really wanted to write. They don't know where to start. And it's, you know, sometimes they're thinking of the money too. So it's making things affordable and making them understand that you have to empower yourself. Exactly. You know, and bless them. There's so many people here that have got the duality of languages. Now I can speak many other languages, Arabic, <laughs> you know, but some people can write in the different languages and that's an advantage too. So they, they, I'm wanting to do some workshops and help people start with the writing and keep their story alive. Well, so that's where I'm hoping to go, inshallah. Well, that's really great. And thank you so much, uh, Ms. Mariam, You're to be welcome. tonight thank with us you. on Halakwait. And we wish you the best of luck with all your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. The viewers we just had with us, Ms. Mariam Khan, self-published author. Let's go now for our second report of the evening, and we will be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs>